Okay, well, we have people out in the neighborhood on a Sunday morning who are out weed and blacking and lawn mowing, so you're going to hear a little bit of noise in the background, I'm afraid. And I do apologize for my voice, but this is what I'm going to be left with for sure. So um, I'm using this uh, new version of the Elvis mic from Shure. It's the new uh, Super 55 uh, SH2. It's a pretty cool looking mic. Um, good enough for Elvis. I guess it's good enough for me. I just like it because it looks pretty unique. So, so we'll move on to uh, chapter 5 of Maplecrest. So, um, as Shannon and Martin were walking up to the room, uh, Jim O'Shannon asked to be excused for a moment and said he would meet up with, um, with Mr. Martin later, and Martin agreed that that was okay. Mr. Martin continued to head up toward his room as he could feel that he was getting tired. The two officers were standing outside his door. He entered his key card and the code and went in closing the door behind him and making sure it was latched and locked, and it was. He headed toward the kitchen and opened the fridge door and poured a small glass of water from a clear pitcher. He returned the pitcher to the fridge and sat the glass on the island counter and pulled out a stool and had a seat. He took a sip of the water and set the glass back down. He heard a voice, very soft, but clear call his name. He looked around and saw no one. The voice called his name again, only this time he was asked to come into the living room, which he did. He sat on the large L-shaped sectional sofa only to see a form, somewhat human, but with large translucent wings and a glow about the form, an aura, if you will. There was like a soft light all around the form. Martin was not afraid, but he was not sure why. The form was standing about eight feet in front of him and was about seven feet tall. Mr. Martin said the form, I do not mean to frighten you. If I am, the form stated, that will never be my intent. The angel continued. To clarify, I am an angel from heaven, sent to inform you of the future events, said the angel. Events on your world have gotten out of hand, to say the least. Many, many humans have gotten mean-spirited, power-hungry, and a danger to all the rest that inhabit the sphere. There are those like yourself who are trying to manage the situation, but we are afraid it is about to become very dangerous to all. Even the believers who are beginning to lose faith and hope, he added. So many have lost their way and have stopped even to think about the possible consequences of their actions. They've even stopped going to church, and some of them have become very dangerous to all around them. Greed, avarice, envy, lust of money and power have overtaken their senses. They care little for the ones who have put them in power, and their lies now stand before them for all to see. The question before us is, can we act before the second coming of Christ or let it all play out as outlined in the book of Revelation? Mr. Martin was thinking to himself if he should or could speak, what could or should he say to the angel that stood before him? Mr. Martin said the angel, it is all right for you to speak even though I can already read your thoughts as you think them. As odd as that may sound, he continued, 
I am expected to have a discussion with you, and that is why I am here, the angel concluded. When we read the minds of most men, it is most concerning to us that their thoughts and desires are mostly selfish and of little help for mankind as we know them. Mr. Martin began to speak. I am not sure why you have chosen me as an intermediary in all of this, he asked. Do you think that I can be of some help in all of the strife around us, he asked. We know you have captured others that you might think might be part of this, but I can assure you they are all just decoys. And within a few days, we will return to normal human form and faculties, I can assure you, stated the angel. We have determined, said the angel, for you to be of exceptional character of the highest order and feel that you may be one of only a few who can bring some attention to the severity of the matters at hand, said the angel. Your current association with some military personnel who still retain some level-headedness about them and some control will also come into some use for all of us who are trying to save this planet, the angel added. What is it you think that I can do with our personnel at hand? Mr. Martin asked of the angel. We do not have control of the entire military at this time, I don't believe, Martin added. It might be possible for us to get it, but I'm not sure how long that would take, he asked. We are most impressed with General Shannon, stated the angel. We know that he can be trusted and is a true believer like yourself. We have to assess, assess if the other chiefs of staff will get on board with us and help us stage a revival that is unprecedented on your world, said the angel. That is where you and General Shannon will come in. We know that the core of people around you can be trusted, and we have entered their conscience and know their hearts. They can be trusted to follow your lead. If I may ask, how much time do you think we have? asked Martin of the Angel. The fact that you are here leads me to think that time is of the essence, added Martin. Well, you are right about that, added the Angel, but we must ask quickly for sure. I guess that the first thing that we must do is get a meeting with all of the military Tom Brass and see how soon it is we can get the assembly here out at our facility, stated Mr. Martin. I can get General Shannon to take care of that and make a priority and get our president here as well. But you know the kind of man he is already, don't you? asked Martin. Of course we do, stated the angel. We feel that once he knows he is in the minority, he may fall in line. We would like to expect no trouble from him once he is made aware of the consequences that are before him, added the angel. He will not be the first ruler to fall at the hands of God, he added. He actually sealed his fate two years ago and has only added to his torment yet to come, the angel concluded. It is not what the Creator had wanted for him in the beginning. I will call General Shannon and ask him to meet me here in the suite, asked Mr. Martin. The angel nodded in agreement. Mr. Martin went over to his desk and began dialing the general's number. He was wondering what the general was going to make out of all of this. He was not sure what to make of this himself as he dialed the number. General, said Mr. Martin on the phone, something has come up. Come up. Can you meet me in my suite as soon as possible? asked Martin. No problem, answered General Shannon. 
I'll be there in five to ten minutes. They both hung up their phones, and Mr. Martin took, took a drink of the water as he looked at the angel with a nervous smile. He sat down the glass and headed to the door to, go, to greet the general. This would be some meeting. Mr. Martin turned to the angel, and he was not sure if he should add great concern or great composure on his face. What is it, Mr. Martin, asked the angel. You look terribly worried, but I know what you're thinking already. Do you need me to take on a more worldly form so the rest of your staff is much more comfortable? The angel asked. I don't know, said Martin truthfully. I don't know how they would take your presence here. Any form might be a shock to them, but I do not find myself afraid of your presence with me. But I am not sure why that is, he added truthfully. You can sense that you have nothing to fear from me because you do not have to fear as you knew something like this day was going to come sooner or later. Many of you have sensed that the second coming was closer at hand than many have, added the angel. We can see how General Shannon takes my appearance and go from there, shall we? asked the angel. Before Martin could speak, <coughs> the angel knew his answer. <coughs> I will keep this form for the time being, said the angel, as Mr. Martin headed toward the door to greet the general. <coughs> this would be some meeting, said Mr. Martin to himself. I agree, said the angel. I agree. <coughs>